All right, awesome. So now that we have our model, our schema, and we can accept requests with our routes, we need to process the request. We'll be using the service and repository layer. A service will take the request data, as I show here, right? You have the router, which is, we're in the router right now. The service will actually take data from the router. It will run any logic that it needs to. And then it can make a call to the repository to get data from the database. So the repository communicates with the database. Now, if the database has anything and needs to return any data or has data to return back, it will do that. And with the data from the database, the repository will send that back to the service. The service will make any needed changes and it will return it back to the router, which would then return it back to the client. So you can see that it goes from the router to the service, to the repository, the repository goes to the DB, the DB then returns data, repository, service, router. So everything will work in motion, right? So I'll start off with the repository, which is important. It'll communicate with the database and we'll utilize that to then create the service because we'll be able to make queries using the methods that we created in the repository. And luckily, since we're using SQL Alchemy, we do not even have to write any queries or raw queries, right? We can use methods. So let's go ahead and in the DB folder, let's create a folder called repository. So the first one I'm gonna create is base.py and the second one is going to be user repo. .py. You can name a repository if you want. I'm just going to call it user repo. And in the base.py, I'm going to create a class called base repository. Now, the reason why this base repository class is so important is because each repository can now inherit this base repository. And any code that you believe is going to be needed by every repository file that you create should be placed into this base repository. So now you don't have to rewrite that code multiple times for each repository. You can place it in this file and every repository that needs that can inherit it from this file. So one thing that I know that each repository will need is an instance of a session because the session will allow the repository to communicate with the database. So I'm going to create a init that will take an instance of itself and an actual session. Right? And this session is coming from SQL Alchemy. So I actually got to import that first. So from SQL Alchemy.ORM import session. And it's not going to return anything, right? But it is going to create an instance of a session. So now the repository can use this session to communicate with the database. So where is this session going to come from? Well, this session is going to come from wherever this is being initialized, right? And I'm going to show it later on where we can inject the session into the router and that router is going to pass it to the service and the service is going to pass it on to the repository. And that's going to allow the repository to communicate with the database. So we don't have to think too hard about that. I'm going to go over that when it's time, but just to give you guys a heads up about that. So now that we have this base, repository, I can go into the user repo and now I can inherit that base repository. So now let me import that. So from dot base, because it's in the same folder, I can just do dot base, import base repository. Awesome. And now I can make the class of user repository. You can name it author repository if you want to as well. It's up to use personal preference, but um, I'm going to call it user repository and I'm going to inherit the base repository. And now I don't even have to define the init because the base repository already has that. Now I can just create the methods that I need for this user repository. So this user repository will contain methods that we can utilize to communicate with the database, right? So if you want to create a user, if you want to check if a user exists, if you want to get a user by a specific parameter, we can do that from here. And that's exactly what we're going to do. The method that I want to create is the create user method, right? Because this is going to allow us to take data that the user sent from the sign up and allow us to create that user based on that data. So let's do that really quick. To even do that, I'm going to need a couple of imports, right? I'm going to need to import first the model 
of the actual user, right? Of how the user is being stored in the database, I'm gonna need that. So I'm gonna need the user from the models folder that we created when we connected the database in the first portion of the video. So so from app dot db dot models dot user import user. And I'm also going to need the schema, right? Because I'm going to need an instance of the user and create schema because I need to know how the data is going to be formatted when I create the user, right? How am I accepting that parameter when the when a person calls the create user method? So I'm going to need that. So from app dot db dot schema dot user import user and create. Make a little space here. And now let's actually define it, right? So let's do def user or create underscore user. And we're gonna pass an instance of itself. And I'm gonna accept the parameter to create this user. So I'm gonna do user underscore data. And the type is gonna be user and create because that's the format in which I'm expecting the data to be passed as, right? I wanna make sure that it's the proper format, it's been validated, and this is what we're gonna to use to create the user. Now the issue with that is that SQL Alchemy is like, what is this user and create? We're gonna to need to pass the information from the user and create to the user model that we defined, right? And we could do that easily. Remember we inherited from the base model of Pydantic and it provides us with a lot of useful methods, we're gonna use that. So. I'm going to create a new variable called new user and it's going to be equal to an instance of user. And within that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dump the data from this user data schema or the instance of the user data schema with the actual data in it. I'm going to dump it into my model. And what we can or how we can do that is we can do user underscore data and we do dot model underscore dump, right? And this is going to dump all the information um, into the instance of the user object. So that's very useful. And just to make sure that you're not passing in any values with none, maybe you don't want anything or any properties with the value of none to be passed to this um, model, you can do exclude underscore none is equal to true. This will make sure that no properties within the schema with the value of none will get passed to the instance of this model, right? Which is user. Because in this creation, I don't want any none value. So I just add that as an extra layer, layer of security. Um, so I put that as a property of the model dump, right? But you don't need to, you can exclude it um, or you can put false here, whatever. But I'm gonna use it for this model dump. So it's just as easy as that. You don't have to be too worried about, you know, if there's none values in your schema, uh, you can also in your schema also check for nuns, but if you do have some that can be none and you don't want to um, add that as none, you could exclude it and it's easy to just dump your data into a model. So next, all we got to do is utilize the session that we have, right? Because remember the base repository has an instance of a session. We inherited that. So we have um, the ability to use that session. All we got to do is self.session to add the add and specify that the instance that's gonna be added is the new user. And we're gonna commit that addition by doing self.session.commit. It's gonna commit those changes and self.session.refresh with the instance of the refresh being the actual new user. And we're gonna return that new user. So now we have the ability to create a user. We got the information that the user sent during the sign up. We dumped that information into a model of user. We utilize the session to add it, commit it, refresh it, and now we return that data. All right, so cool. Now that we're able to create a user, let's create some additional methods that are useful, right? So let's create the user exist by email. All right, and this is gonna take an instance of itself. 
an email, which is going to be a string. And what it's going to return is a bool, right? Because I just want to pass the email and check if a user exists within the user table. So what I'm going to do is I am going to provide a variable called user. It is going to do a self dot session dot query. And I'm going to pass a you know reference of what we're querying, right? What table are we querying? And that is the user. Remember, we use the user model to actually generate the table. So it's going to use that as a reference to what we're actually going to query. And then we're going to do the filter by. And shout out to SQL Alchemy makes life so much easier. And what we're going to filter by is the email. And we're going to make sure that the email is equal to the email that was provided. And what do we want? Well, we want the first instance of it, right? If we find anything with this email, get the first instance of it, right? That means it exists. Um, and what we're going to return is we're going to return a bool of the user. So if it exists, then it's going to return true. If it doesn't exist, then it's going to return false, right? Because we wrapped it around with a bool. And that should be enough. You see how it's a one liner with SQL Alchemy, right? So easy. And we're going to do the same thing. But instead of returning a bool, we're going to return the actual user, right? Because maybe you just want to get the user's information by email. You could do that as well. So instead of that, of a bool, we're going to return the user. And we're going to do get user. I changed the name. Get user by ID, by email. And we're going to return the user itself, not the you know Boolean version of it. All right, so the last method we're going to create in this repository is the get user by ID, which as the name implies, well, it's going to get the user by ID. So we're going to do get underscore user by underscore ID instance of itself. Um, and then we're going to pass a parameter of user underscore ID. And the ID is going to be of type int. And we're going to do user is equal to self dot um, session dot get or actually dot query and then do user and filter by and then we're going to pass the ID and make that equal to user underscore ID so any user with the ID and there should only be one because it's unique with the type of user ID or with the um, value that matches user ID, um, it's going to return that. And we, we want the first user that matches that. There should only be one. So then from here, all I got to do is just return the user. And we should be good to go. So this is the user repository. We're able to create a user. We're able to check if a user exists by email. And I'll return a Boolean. And we're able to get a user by email. And now we return a user. And we're able to get a user by ID. Perfect. And that this should also return a user, by the way. So now we're done with the user repository.